Countless ages had come and gone since the Old Ones graced the planet with their divine presence, and in that time, untold numbers of Lizardmen had fought and died in the wars against the monsters of the Immaterium. They had sacrificed more than any race should ever have to, and bore those losses as stoically as the unyielding pyramids that formed their great temple cities. A hundred thousand heroes had come and gone, lost in the madness that consumed the planet, their names forgotten as the spawning pools of Itza and Hexadol churned out predators for the meat grinder, a cruel cosmic joke where apex carnivores were no longer the top of the food chain. And yet, once in a dozen generations, a creature would rise from this ancient primordial soup and turn the tides of history. A champion marked for greatness, with the strength to banish greater demons and hold the endless Vermintide at bay. This champion was Gorok, the Great White Lizard, an enormous albino anvil upon which Eats' enemies would break and break again. He does not know pain, he does not know fear, and with the possible exceptions of Krotgar the Old Blood and Chakax the Eternity Warden, he is the finest Saurus in history, an immovable killing machine who has left untold destruction in his wake on more than a few occasions. He has choked the life from hydras with his bare hands, pummeled wyverns into the ancient causeways of the first city, deflected warp lightning with the shield of eons, and decapitated bloodthirsters with the mace of Ulamak. There is no creature he will not face, no enemy he cannot defeat, and at the head of Itza's fierce warriors, the Lizardmen have known victories uncounted. But the ruling mage priests have seen visions of a terrifying doom bowl in search of a primeval artifact in the deserts of the undead and should have fallen to his evil clutches, it would breed catastrophe. The Great White Lizard commands his forces to Nehekara, where another monster lies in wait. Under a scarlet moon, during one of Morslib's peculiar cycles, was Torox the Brass Bull born. He was once a terrifying chief of the Minotaur tribes that haunt the Great Forest, and he had curried much favor with the Dark Gods. Through the ruined flesh of one of his countless victims, an emissary of corn wriggled into the mortal plane, with jagged horns and jet black eyes. And what this herald might have said, no one will ever know, as Torox grabbed it by the neck and bit off its head before it had a chance to speak. But as one might imagine, feasting on demon spawn can have unpleasant side effects. Convulsions overtook him as he screamed and roared, and his already insatiable bloodlust became all-consuming. For a year and a day, he rampaged throughout the lands of men and undead, killing any monster or being he could find. The blood ran in rivers at his feet, and finally, after a nightmare of violence that must have pleased Karnath to his very core, the slaughter horn fell to the ground, exhausted and spent. And he would have died there, but Korn does not allow his champions to fall so easily. Torox was sent back to the mortal plane with a body of living metal, a doom bull with no equal on the planet. Blessed by the Blood God, and carving a path of red ruin in his name, he began to slaughter anew, his only weakness, a tiny speck of soft flesh exposed on his throat. Punishment for daring to touch a herald of the Lord of Skulls. Driven by corn, an incessant rage fueling his perpetual hunt, he learned of an ancient artifact in the deserts of the Tomb Kings, an icon of devotion that would make him unto a living god of death, a long-lost weapon of chaos buried by the sands of time. He would have it, and usher in a new age for the beastmen of the Great Forest, but first, he would need to spill blood on the sand. And so Gorok the Great White Lizard, Chakax the Eternity Warden, and Torox the Brass Bull have come to Nehekara in search of a long-lost weapon of corn. For the Lizardmen, the objective is pretty simple. Kill a bunch of beastmen, and make sure Daddy Doom Bull doesn't walk away with a new toy to play with. And they certainly have the tools to prevent it. A powerful front line with Carnosaur and Ancient Snaked on support, and two of the greatest cold-blooded heroes of an age. But the Beastmen aren't without their fair share of sledgehammers. A Gorbull, Vestigors, and a train of Minotaurs about to choo-choo all over the front ranks of Saurus warriors, and Daddy Doombull himself, just an absolute monster wielding a rune-tortured axe of the Blood God. Beastmen army is split into two contingents, one on the far left flank with Vestigors and a giant, and the main force led by Daddy Doombull in the center, while the Pterodons with Fire Leech Bolas unleash their devastating payload, and those poor Ungors are going to be immolated on the front ranks and blown into millions of little itty bitty pieces. Really cool to see those in action. You don't get to see those units a lot, but they can be great against chaff units. Really good way to kind of thin out the horde 
before the Beastmen and Lizardmen decide to close into the melee with each other. There are a bunch of Centaurs with throwing axes on the field. They'll provide some nice skirmish support, and they're very, very versatile. A unit that you'll probably see a lot in competitive play. They can run down a lot of the fast movers like the Chameleon Skinks, and they have the melee capability to actually kill them and get some nice hammer and anvils off as well. On the left flank, Gore has taken quite a bit of damage from those Chameleon Skinks and the skirmishing early on, so they'll push up and try to overload the right flank of the Lizardmen while the main force pushes up. And an Ancient Stegodon, Saurus Warriors, and Gorok, the Great White Lizard, prepare to charge into close quarters combat. And a thunderous charge it will be. Look at how gigantic Gorok, the Great White Lizard, is. He is huge, absolutely terrifying, and when he slams into melee and clamps those jaws down, there's going to be a lot of blood fountaining in the air, and he will rip through these front ranks without much problem. And that mace that Ulamak has carved through the Terrors of the Warp, I think it's going to have much trouble carving through the nerdy stepchildren of the Beastmen. They don't even have hordes. You throw them up against Gorok, not a fair fight. And if this doesn't make you want him in an official capacity, I don't know what will do it for you, man. Looks absolutely godlike. And those Ungors get ripped apart by a flanking charge from the Ancient Stegodon. And the front ranks, those meat shields will go running. I don't really blame them. So Fire Leech Bull is still providing that aerial support against some really nice grenade shots into the middle of the Beastmen line. Right, right flank already kind of breaking a bit here as the Gore Bull charges in and kind of stems the tide, deals with Gorok. But the Centigors with throwing axes in the back lines, dealing with the Chameleon Skanks, running them over. And that is the versatility that they provide. Able to get into melee, run down those incredibly annoying units with some poor Skink just laying there with his head chopped off, bleeding into the sand and those Chameleon Skinks will not be coming back to the fight. They will be run off the map. But, Chakax the Eternity Warden is on top of a Carnosaur. He doesn't have a mount in the source material. I'm not actually sure that I love the fact that he was put on a Carnosaur for this one by Jack, but I'll deal with it for now. It is a unique looking Carnosaur, unique color scheme on it anyway, and he's terrifying on top of it. As you might imagine, the Eternity Warden on a Carnosaur might be. He is the, essentially the captain of the Temple Guard. So, don't normally see him mounted up. But yeah, he's going to do some serious work over there dealing with the giant. Ancient Stegodon still causing terror across the line. And Curse of the Midnight Wind has been popped down in the middle of the melee fight. But Gorok is not in a good spot. Fighting a bunch of Minotaurs with great weapons by himself. He will need the Temple Guard and their support if he wants to win that fight. But he does have the Shield of Eons. Plus 10 shield defense, plus 12 shield armor, and plus 44 missile parry. Heroic Killing Blow gives him 40% AP and weapon damage, and the Great White Lizard buff gives him plus 32% splash attack power, plus 12 melee attack, and plus 18% vigor. So he is a beast when dealing with a bunch of chaff or medium tier infantry. Chakax and the Sora Scarvet over on this side are doing their best to anchor the line here on top of their Carnosaurs. Gorbul, some Gores, and the Giant have come over. And that Sora Scarbet is no longer having a good time. Completely surrounded by the Doom Bull, actually. Not the Gorbul, that was Torox himself. Yeah, not a fight he wants to take. Because with that great weapon, Torox will have a bonus for Slarge. And Chakax needs to come over and help support. Curse of the Midnight Wind will be extremely beneficial in this fight. Over on the left flank of the Beastmen. But still, pretty tough. Dealing with a Chaos Giant. And Torox the Brass Bull over in that melee grind. Temple Guard and some of the Saurus engaging the left wing contingent of the Beastmen, the flanking units who try to get in and around behind, and they have done so. They've completely surrounded the Saurus over there, but those are some incredibly tanky units. Saurus are not easy to bring down. Gorb will come in and charge from behind, and that support will help tremendously as he comes in and gores a bunch of Temple Guard from the back. And the Ancient Stegodon is taking some skirmish fire from the Ungor Raiders in the rear. Lots of routing units for the Beastmen. They're a faction without fantastic leadership, obviously, and it's not uncommon to have like half of your army booking it while you patiently or maybe not so patiently wait to have them cycle back into action. And the Lizardmen certainly know how to manipulate that. Tons of terror causing units on the field, but they don't have any fast movers at the moment. No cold ones on the field, which means they can't run down these routing gores and prevent them from routing very easily. The Saurus doing what they can as the Ancient Stegodon makes its way over to Torox, and with a nice charge in the rear, the Brass Bull will go flying. He'll be fine after that charge. Stegodon run, not really designed to kill large targets, although still has a pretty powerful weapon damage and a big AP component. Torox should be fine. 
and another curse of the midnight wind goes down lots of that buff going down and honestly it's a great one for the lore of heavens it is a fantastic way to mitigate damage especially where torox is where you know there's going to be a lot of ap damage focused on your line continuously plopping that debuff down will make him much less useful in prolonged melee combat and so that's a very nice use but the Scylodon with Rev Crystal, getting some nice heals in, deciding to charge in. Not sure that it wants to go into melee with Torox, the Brass Bull, but for now, stun locking him, keeping him on the ground. Gorbuls and Doombulls both have a bit of a mass issue where they can kind of get knocked around by dinosaurs pretty easily and other relatively large targets. Not sure if that's entirely intentional because sometimes they'll go flying really, really far, but the Temple Guard and Saurus are still holding on very nicely, and Gorbul has made it over to help support the left flank and provide some of that overwhelming killing power in close quarters that the Gorbals are so well known for. Centigors with throwing axes harassing the literal crap out of that poor ancient Stegodon. What I would presume is a herbivore, this is based on Triceratops, but just as useful for killing stuff, if not more so, than the predatorial carnosaurs of Lustria, and he'll get a charge into them to try and silence them, but taking a lot of skirmish fire right now. But this is what we're here for, right here. Brass Bull versus Great White Lizard, Monster of the Great Forest versus the Monster Saurus, and Gorok sent spiraling into the sand after that first charge. Pretty realistic outcome when a ton of angry metal punches you right in the mouth, and he goes flying. And the Doom Bull looks to get even closer and share some cornate loving with him, stomp all over his battered corpse, but he's not dead yet. Gorok is not a corpse yet. He's got plenty of fight left in him, and the champion of the first city will not go down without a big brawl here. Outcome of this entire battle pretty much hangs in the balance between these two lords that absolutely need to make it into Total War Warhammer Trilogy. I think Torox and Doombulls are by far my biggest desire for the Beastmen moving forward, with the Gorgon also on that list. But Mesa Ulamak versus Rune Tortured Axe, Old Ones vs. Korn, and Torox gets sent flying by the legendary strength of the Great White Lizard. Look at that, man. He just went flying like 35, 40 feet. Easy. Gorok closing in a melee here. Cowman burst Dino Man. We know how that goes in Jurassic Park. Can Torox flip the script here? He's got that huge rune tortured axe. Will it be enough? Gorok is really low right now. Torox is looking much better. And that bonus versus large will prove the deciding factor. Gorok was hurt after his fight with the Minotaurs, Torox was less so, and that was also beneficial, but I think even from full HP, Torox probably wins that fight, but he's more of a large killer than Gorok is, and that's the biggest reason. I think Gorok is probably better against medium tier or even high tier infantry, but Torox definitely better against large units, and Gorok does count as large as he should. You see, he's like three or four times the size of Chakax or the other Saurus in the Lizardman roster. And that was enough for Torox to take the duel and take the field, and he will get that powerful weapon from Korn and do some probably pretty nasty stuff with it. And that was a really fast battle, and going into it, I kind of expected that, honestly, given the fact that both the Beastmen and the Lizardmen are so Rush-centric focused. And it typically, this matchup, when I play it, it usually goes either Lizardmen absolutely face roll with the Dinos and tear out everything, or the mobility and the versatility of the Beastmen, particularly the Centigors with throwing axes proves too much, and the Dinos kind of get whittled down, and their Chameleon's Kings get run down by the fast movers, and it proves too much for the Lizards. Kind of what happened here. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Indie Pride, signing out for now.